Uh, welcome everybody. This is the uh, River Island Tech Hub down here in Shoreditch. Thank you all for coming along today. I know it's hot, I know it's lovely outside, but this is you know, going to be interesting. Quite looking forward to it. So, what have we got in the room today? Techies. Scrum Masters. Okay, Heads of and Management. Okay, Recruiters. <laughs> okay, we're just trying to spot you, don't worry. Okay, so, um, massive thank you for everybody for coming down today. I will be using notes, I do apologise, which means I have to juggle between the two. These events are massively important to us. Uh, River Island, we've adopted Agile quite hard, and you know we've reached that point now where we're scaling, and scaling in Agile is difficult. And you know we need to use these events to discuss and listen to what you guys have to say about scaling Agile, and we need to learn from you, as much as I hope you'll learn something from us as well. So if you want to hear more about what we're doing uh, in more detail, how many River Island guys do we have in the room? Okay, hello. Are you business or tech? <laughs> some tech, some business. Not as many as I thought, actually. I was hoping for a few more today. Uh, and Ravoco, who help us uh, recruit some of those guys. Hi, guys. Nice call out. There you go. Job done. So, myself, my name's Mike Parkinson. I'm head of engineering at RA Tech. I started playing about with Agile in about the year 2000. I, had, uh, I was working at the time for a small outsourcing company and I spent 99% of my time writing functional specs and change requests, which drove me completely bananas. A friend of mine sent me a link uh, to a news article on some obscure site that I don't think exists anymore uh, about Agile uh, and I was fascinated. So I bought a book, can't remember the title, do apologise, it was quite a long time ago, 18 years, uh, and here I am today. <coughs> Uh, and it's been a fascinating journey. Um, some real successes uh, when I was working for that small company, a company called Make Stuff Happen. Uh, when we started adopting Agile there, it was fascinating to see how things developed and how the customer engagement improved and how we managed to get through stuff so much more quickly and added so much value to our customers. I then moved on to Tesco, spent a few years there doing some uh, Interesting projects. Dotcom only stores are great fun, up to a point. Uh, and then moved on to BAT where we did uh, B2B. Again, in each place we brought Agile in with us uh, and tried to innovate in those areas. And it was fascinating, fascinating to see what happened. Uh, I've been described as an evangelist. Uh, much more would describe myself more as an enthusiast. I love Agile. It's fun. Okay, I know we all work for a living, but it is actually quite good fun. Because when it all comes together and all those elements, the culture, the people, the learning, the process, when it all comes together, it's magical. Uh, I don't know if any of you have seen this, and I hope you have, but when it does come together, it's absolutely glorious. And at River Island, we had the perfect storm. Some really interesting things have happened here that I've never seen happen before. And I'll just take you through a little bit of the history of what we've done. Uh, and hopefully that'll explain it. So, we s I joined about two and a half years ago. When we started, there was, we were awash with waterfall, literally. A little bit of wagile in a couple of teams, several long-running multi-year projects which weren't delivering any value and were extremely expensive and not doing a great deal. I'm sure this is familiar to everybody. So, we started transforming. One of the key ingredients for this is Big Bang Agile doesn't work. Who's tried Big Bang Agile? Did it work? No. No, there you go. Uh, it's one of the strange things. Agile in old or large corporates is really difficult to do. Really difficult to do. The business is so risk averse that it scares the hell out of them. I had it at Tesco, I had it at BAT. Didn't have it at River Island. And it's been very strange. The first year we spent building a solid foundation. We did not do Big Bang, okay? We started very small with a couple of the teams at the bottom, but the key to this was these guys up here and this lady here, Faye Roth. We established our way of working and she communicated up to those guys, the C-level. Doug Gardner, Ben Lewis, Warren Cohen. CIO, CEO and CFO. And these guys were really bought into it, surprisingly so. 
Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. Also, the heads of were very, very supportive of change. So as we introduced this incrementally, bit by bit by bit, started teaching them the language of Agile and what it means and how it works, their adoption of it was fascinating. <coughs> they just kept grabbing more and more and moving it along. It was unbelievable. I was shocked. Uh, after I'd been here about six months, we opened this place. Was it about six months we opened this place? Yeah, it was about two years ago. Uh, and I stood over there just sorting some of the team stuff out. And Ben wandered in, walked up to me and said, uh, you know, chat a bit about Shoreditch and how nice it was here and how there were great restaurants and bars and everything else. And then he turned around and said, how's DevOps doing? Now, this took me back a bit because this guy's run a bricks and mortar company for about 20 odd years. How the hell did he learn about DevOps? Because we haven't told him about it. Uh, so I mumbled a few responses and he sort of nodded and went off quite happy. Uh, it was later on I found that Faye had given him the Phoenix Project. And the bugger had gone and read it. Which is even more fascinating. Uh, so yeah, definitely a good idea. Just leave it on your CEO's desk. Great tactic. Really, really good. One of the key things which we wanted to do when we first started up was create something very visual that could be explained very simply. So myself and a guy called James Chapman hid ourselves in a room over in our Westworld department for quite a long time and came up with this model. It's not safe, it's not less, it's sort of in between. And it fits us. So we tried to focus, not so much on the execution bit of it, because we knew about that. Agile, Scrum, great, we can do that, that's pretty straightforward, we know that, it's very easy. Well, it's not, but it's easy to understand. The bit that was difficult was this, is how do we get the business bought into this process? How do we get them to understand the terminology and the value that this brings? So we spent a lot of time explaining to them this process to the point where we now have a monthly governance meeting with the C-level and the directors where they sit down and they prioritise on value. That was a shock for me. It's the first time I've ever seen that happen and it happens so simply. From the adoption point of view, as I said, we shared that model out, we did a lot of sessions, we got some companies in to do some training in Scrum Masters and product owners. That was all quite interesting. The business got involved in this. You know, the directors, some of the directors came to those training sessions, some of the lieutenants came into those directors level. We got some Scrum Masters in, standard stuff, really good, very effective, started using Jira, lovely. But then I started walking around the business and I started seeing Kanban boards up in the buying and merchandising floor. Uh, and then I heard that teams, that some of the teams over in HR are using the Teams Kanban boards. And they're using Trello as well, marketing. Uh, and they started asking us for coaching. So we've actually got business teams here, and we're talking about buying merchandise. And these are guys who, you know, whoops, no, no, come back. These are guys who buy and sell clothes and decide where they go. They were using Kanban boards, for God's sake, uh, and property using it as well uh, and it's been absolutely fascinating because it's it broke my idea of what agile was to me agile was technology you do this you take scrum you get your backlogs you deliver software you deliver value absolutely brilliant but here's a bunch of guys just taking little elements out and saying we're going to use this and becoming much more effective because of it I've never seen this happen before in any other business. A BAT, Jesus, you said the word agile in a meeting and they all leapt up in surprise. Here, they were asking us more questions. How can you teach us? How can we do more in this area? What more can we do? Absolutely amazing. So today, two years on, where are we? Well, we've got the portfolio process. So we've got all the directors, all the C-level in a room, once a month, every single month, prioritizing one priority for each thing, you can't have five number ones, only one. It's all prioritised on value. Okay, this is fascinating because I've not seen this at sea level before. This is absolutely brilliant. Nobody's banging on the desk going, oh, I must have my feature. They're actually talking about value. We've got product owners. The fight I had at BAT to get product owners was unbelievable. Here, they're volunteering. Yes, some are BAs with delegated authority, but by God, they're still effective. And when we have a product owner in a team, the efficiency of that team is phenomenal. How fast they move is so much better when you've got that business person there championing what they're trying to achieve. 
Obviously, we've got our model. We continue to iterate on that. It's growing and developing every single week. We even got them to understand what MVP was, but not only MVP as in minimum viable product, but now the business is starting to adopt minimal viable process. So they're actually looking at their processes and looking at, well, if we spend 20% of the effort, we actually get 8% return. That's enough. That's fascinating to see. I say I've never seen this in any company before. Uh, we're adopting you know, learning, we're embedding learning in, we've got our values which we've developed over the last couple of years which really helped get the message of what we're trying to do across, but also across to the business. You know, more passion about what we're trying to achieve, focus on value, pace, continuous improvement and empowerment. You know, the teams on our end have never, ever, ever had this level of empowerment and it's increasing every time. DevOps, I've had to do nothing with DevOps because I basically pointed the operations teams at the engineering teams and they're doing it. We set up a load of cops for engineering and all of a sudden operations started turning up. And now we've got teams collaborating across engineering and operations in ways I've never seen before. And we're also starting to get the business coming in as well. Again, absolutely fascinating. Metrics. Agile is an empirical process. Without metrics, it's nothing. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Our metrics are now getting mature and the business are also understanding it. This is the first company I've worked in where I can actually say the word landing zone and nobody runs screaming out of the room. So, as I say, it's been a, for me personally, it's been a fascinating experience at River Island. I've never had a company adopt Agile in such a way. And not only just within tech, but the business itself starting to really get under the lid of what this is. Uh, from a maturity standpoint, obviously, I'd still say we're at the toddler stage. You know, we've learned to speak and we can just about walk. Uh, scaling is what we're doing next. We're at about 120, 130 engineers across uh, 18 teams. <coughs> and we're growing rapidly. We're doing everything from microservices, web development, PLSQL, you name it, we're doing it. Uh, but scaling our job is very, very difficult and scaling it with the business now because the business are more involved with us than they've ever been before. So hopefully next year, somewhere up here, a little bit more automation in I think at the moment, but yeah, we're developing quite well. But to give an example of one of the key areas within River Island that's adopted Agile wholeheartedly, I'd like to introduce Chris Britton. Well, thank you. I will take said microphone, thank you. Um, Mike did a show of hands who was in tech, who's not in tech? Fantastic, I'm not alone. This is good. So my name is Chris and I actually work in learning and development, so part of the wider HR team at River Island. Um, similar to Mike, you learn in development? Yes. Oh, HR, close enough. Yeah, that's all right. It's one and the same. One and the same, exactly, one team. Love it. Um, me and Mike actually started about a similar sort of time. I think it was about a month before you. I remember having a chat with you just when yeah. you first walked in. Um, and my previous experience to Agile, as with most HR professionals, was great. We can go home early. Agile working, working at home, woo, <laughs> really, really good. So actually when I started hearing people talk about Agile in the business and speaking to Mike and his colleagues, starting to unpick it and, and find a little bit more about it, uh, we were recommended a book. Uh, this book which I brought with me, which is by um, Jess Sutherland, which I believe is some form of oracle in, in the tech world, I don't know. Uh, but the art of doing twice the work in half the time. Now that's a title, isn't it? That's kind of the same thing. If I can do half the work, not half the work, twice the work in half the time, I can actually work a two day week, let alone going home early or working at home one day a week. So I read the book, as did the majority of our HR team, and, and we started unpicking some bits in it that we thought, well, actually, could we use that? Could we use the principles of Agile, of Scrum, of Kanban to do some of the project work that we're doing? So with everything in learning and development, I thought, well, I can't do that if I don't have a nice certificate to say I'm a skilled expert in it. So I went out and I got myself certified as a Scrum Master, uh, which I now am. So that's good. I had that course with uh, all tech people. And you were talking about lots of things. I had no idea what you were talking about. Um, but the important thing is I passed my test and I got my certificate. Um, but important, I also took away some key principles from it, which we've adopted in learning and development um, to help us with our project flow and to help us with our work stream. And it's sped up our team. It's sped up how we deliver things to the business. I just wanted to share our story with you and share some of the key principles we've taken from Scrum and from Agile um, and some of the success, uh, success stories as well. So what have we done? Well, we haven't done everything. I looked as part of the Scrum Master course, kind of read the book, spoke to Mike and his team and, and various other people, and there's a lot to Scrum, there's a lot to Agile if you were to adopt it in its fullest possible tech sense. That doesn't necessarily work. 
in other parts of the business. It didn't work for us in L&D, didn't work for us in the wider HR team, but we wanted to pick the bits from it which would work. And these are the key bits from my experience, from testing and learning in an iterative way, of course, um, that we have found have been really beneficial to us. And the first thing is really adopting this concept of having a scrum team. So we identify key projects which we are working on, big projects which are going to add big value to the business, and we identified a scrum team that we could use to do that. And that scrum team, when we first started doing this, was just the L&D team. It was just everyone. And because we wanted to get everyone involved, learn the language, kind of learn some of the processes around it. And as we kind of become more mature on how we use it, um, that team starts to change and we start drawing in the experts when we need them and only the right people do the right things at the right time. Um, but it's really helped us kind of label ourselves as this scrum team to help with the culture and the mindset of working in an agile way. We've also adopted product backlogs. So that's looking what do we actually need to deliver and let's prioritize it, as Mike was saying, not just delivering everything straight away and hoping for the best or doing what we typically do in L&D, which is design something for a year, then deliver it and hope that it lands and nothing's changed in the last year and it's still the same conversation that needed to be had 12 months ago. And so actually being able to prioritize and reprioritize on a regular basis has really helped us. The thing that's really, really taken off for us is sprinting and standing up. And not just standing up like I'm now, I mean doing daily stand-ups. So with sprinting, <coughs> been able to break it down into two-week cycles, it's helped us with our backlogs, really helped us prioritize what we're doing, and it's starting to help us finish things. Anyone who's not in tech and anyone who's in tech, you might be guilty of starting lots of different things and hoping that they get finished and then moving on to something else, particularly in L&D, typically something else shiny and new. So to get us to start finishing things, we started using sprinting and really focusing on, narrow, uh, on narrowing our, down our focus. Standing up has been the biggest impact for us. Getting together using Teams, using Skype, if we're there physically, and getting people together every single day, committing to that 15 minutes, and using my newfound knowledge of asking three questions as a Scrum Master, and to really make sure we're on track with what we need to do. My team is very diverse in terms of location. So we have, I mean, I live in Brighton. We have someone who lives in Portugal, in Newcastle, in Lancashire, uh, Northampton, Horsham, London, wherever, all over the place. So actually using technology like Microsoft Teams, Skype, and really helped us come together as a unit every single day. And that's worked in making sure that everyone is collaborative, everyone knows what everyone's working on on a regular basis as well. So that's been a real benefit to us. And then looking back at what we did, kind of that's again something we're not particularly great at learning and development normally is we just do it and then move on to something different. Retrospectively looking back, what happened, how do we work together, what's landed well, what hasn't landed well, and learning from that next time round, that's really helped us land really big projects. Now as we started using it, and as we started becoming a little bit more fluid and understanding the principles and the processes behind it, other teams started coming to us, as well as to Mike's team in tech, to help them, coach them, help them set up their Kanban boards. And one of the biggest success stories for us was helping our retail colleagues, helping them set up Kanban boards and Scrum boards and, and everything else, virtually and physically, to help particularly with store openings. So it's one thing at River Island, we are a bricks and mortar business originally, obviously the world is changing, but we are still opening stores and there's a whole big rigmarole they go through to get stores open, a big massive checklist that exists to get stuff done. So we decided to break that checklist down with retail and act as scrum masters on their behalf to help them with this two week, last two weeks of their store checklist to get the stores open. Um, I mean, just some examples of some of the boards we've created and help, help them create or things like this using teams, using physical stuff as well. And the biggest success stories I can share with you with this is, bear in mind we're a commercial business, we're all about trading, we're all about bringing money into the organization and selling clothes. With the first time we've ran this with retail, we were able to open one of our brand new stores a full day early. So that's a full day's trading that we wouldn't have had otherwise, just because we're working in a slightly different way. That's speeding up, that's getting things done quickly, it's people owning their tasks, <coughs> it's retrospective, it's getting them together on a day-to-day -day basis and being collaborative. We then use that again with another store opening in a slightly different location and managed to get that store open two days early. So that's an extra two days trading. So just from one trial to the next, we've actually learned, we've sped up even more so. So I don't claim to be technically minded. I don't claim to understand much about the full capacity of what full Scrum is able to be done and all about DevOps and all that sort of stuff. I've got a very loose knowledge of it. But what I do know is there are bits out there in Agile, in Scrum, in Kanban that can be used in any department. You do not need to be tech focused. You just need to work trial error, pick the bits that work for you. And that's what's worked for us and we've seen real success stories with it.